Hello, I'm Glenda Shawley from Fabulous Networking. I keep pe seeing people say that networking doesn't work and you won't be surprised to hear that I disagree with that. But when people say it doesn't work, there are usually a number of reasons. It may be that they've never tried it. And I do see a lot of people saying it doesn't work, but I've never been to a networking meeting. How can you judge something you've never tried? It may be that they are people who think they can walk straight into a networking meeting and make a sale. Well, that doesn't work either because most people don't go networking to buy. They go networking to build relationships. Um, and maybe they go to learn something. The other reason that networking doesn't work or may not work is that people don't prepare adequately before they go to a meeting. So in this short video, I wanted to pose five questions that I think you should think about before you go to a networking meeting. So the first is, what am I doing here? If you don't have a goal, how will you be able to measure your success? If you don't know why you're going to something, how can you perform adequately? You just appear as somebody who you know, is a little bit vague, has been told they need to go networking and um, has just shown up because that's what they were told to do, but hasn't really got any purpose about them, hasn't really thought about what they want to achieve from the meeting. So are you looking to develop relationships with a particular kind of business owner, for instance? Are you maybe looking for suppliers or for people that you potentially could collaborate with? You know, it may be that you want to work with another professional organisation that offers complementary services to yours, where perhaps a bit of joint marketing might add to your offer. <clears throat> Excuse me. It may be that you want some support on your business journey. That, you know, being in business on your own account is a bit lonelier than you thought it would be. And it would be nice to have people who understand to bounce ideas around with from time to time. Or it may be that you're setting out to learn or you just want some company. The second question it, before you go is to have a really good think about what you want people to know about you. What I often see at networking events is people throwing everything, including the kitchen sink, into a, a post. You know, if they um, if they have more than one business or they have multiple offers, they tell us about them all. At most networking events, you won't have more than 60 seconds to talk about your business. At many events, it may only be 30 or 40 seconds. That's not a lot of time. And if you pile everything in, nothing will be remembered. So have a think about one clear, concise message that you want people to hear, understand and remember. It's a really good idea to think about the results that you get for your clients. You don't have to describe the how you get them. It's what you do for your clients. So, for example, an accountant might say, I help small business owners to minimise their tax legally. A web developer might say, I design e-commerce websites that sell. It's very specific. You know who um, the target audience is. You know what the results they get. You can start to identify as the listener to that kind of pitch who you might introduce that person to or how you might be able to work with them. So think about the results and stick to those and keep it really clear, short and concise. So then think about what would I like people to feel about me? You know, we jump to conclusions very rapidly, far more rapidly than we really should. So when you meet somebody new, the chances are that they've made a decision about you in no more than six seconds. 
So what do you want that decision to be? What do you want them to feel? You know, it's emotion that kicks in before logic. So, you know, it's a gut reaction they're going to feel. So think about what you would like them to feel and then think about what kind of behavior you might need to demonstrate to get them to feel that. So it might be that you want to be cheerful, that you might want to be smiley, um, <laughs> You might want to be loud, but you know if that's what you want people to feel about you, um, what you probably want people to feel about is that you're not a knob, that you're not um, uh, a dickhead, as, as um, the manager of our football club says. No, no dickheads here. People are not allowed to join the team if their ego is what gets them there. So you know you want to be thought of well. So exactly what would you like people to think and how do you need to behave for that uh so I feel and then the next thing is what do you want them to think about you so you really want people to like you and respect you and ultimately you will want them to trust you so how do you get them to warm to in the first place to um, recognize the skills and qualities that you have so again, if you plan for the reaction that you want to have, that first impression you want to create, uh, and you have that in your mind as you respond to people, as you approach people, then you are likely to make a much better first impression. And then the fifth question is, how can I be memorable? And you want to be remembered for the right reasons, not the wrong reasons. So you want to leave all those things behind that people are going to object to. You also don't want to be this kind of grey suit that merges in with all the other grey suits. So, you know, one way to be memorable is to wear something reasonably striking. Um, I know a number of people who wear their brand colours to go networking. That helps people to pigeonhole them and recognise who they are, and file them in the right bit of their memory um, going forward. So have a think what you wear. Um, again, really think about the message you want to convey. If you're going to do a 60 second or a 30 second or a 40 second pitch, you know, try and make that clear, concise and punchy so that people remember it. And if you can deliver it in such a way that it stands out, you know, that's even better. I do remember going to a networking event once where uh, one chap walked around the table whilst he was delivering his one minute pitch. I remember that vividly. It's probably 15 years since I saw that pitch, possibly even more. Trouble is, I don't remember who he was, or I do remember that he was um, in the motor trade, but I don't remember his name and stuff. So don't get too gimmicky because you need to make sure that people remember the key messages and not just that you made a little bit of a fool of yourself or you were you know, you're dancing like you were on TikTok or something like that. So there you have it, five questions to think about and to prepare for before you go networking. What am I doing here? What do I want people to know about me? What do I want people to feel about me? What do I want people to think about me? And how can I be memorable? I look forward to meeting you at a networking event soon and at Fabulous Networking, you're welcome to visit a meeting or several meetings, but three visits in total before you make a decision about joining. We'd love to meet you. Bye for now.